In today's video, the whoosh effect. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rabella from ProPhysique.com coming to you on Friday and we're going to talk about the whoosh effect, what it is, why it happens, why we should worry about it, and why do we need to explain it. And for those of us that have experienced it, uh, maybe sometimes this may help. A lot of the things I'm going to say are theory because you know, as much as we like to think we understand the human body, there is just so much going on that is so dynamic that, you know, we like to explain some of the processes, but when you notice things just happen over and over and over again, you just come to expect them and believe them. And as a coach who coaches these people, athletes, people that are in fat loss phases, and then also someone who himself diets down and today had a big drop on the scale, well, I know it as a fact. I see it so much, and I've seen it over the last 10 years so much that it's um, it's something that you know, it's just part of what we do as coaches and as athletes. We get to expect it. So the reason I'm talking about the whoosh effect today, well, it just so happened that I got this question on my direct message, and here it is, um, from a young man. He's 21 years old. Started a weight loss phase at I think it was around 188 pounds, and he didn't see any weight loss for about a week and a half. And then all of a sudden he's down five pounds and he's wondering, is it muscle loss? Should he increase the calories? Is it too fast? And so as a coach, if I was in the situation and coaching you, here's what I would say. No, we don't make any changes. We ride this out and here's why. Muscle loss is very difficult. For, we've seen the research, right? We know that it takes about three weeks of not training a muscle before there's any muscle loss. Now, that means muscle fiber loss, muscle fiber size decrease. There is certainly going to be changes in the muscle fullness that we see if you don't train it, okay? It's not gonna store as much glycogen. There's going to be a change in the way it looks, but the actual muscle itself is secure, okay? So, in two weeks, if you've lost five pounds and you haven't stopped lifting weights, you haven't lost any muscle. In fact, you might still be putting on muscle at this stage, depending on what your overall body composition is at. So then why did the scale drop five pounds and what the heck is going on? Why is it just dropping so randomly? Well, as much as we like fat loss to be linear, you know, if we're, let's say we're gonna lose a pound a week or two pounds a week, we'd like to see it down 0.25 pounds every single day, deep, 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 deep. That is just not what happens, guys. It is not that easy to, um, to see weight loss happen like that. What happens is we tend to plateau and then drop and plateau and then drop. And that's where we get what we call this whoosh effect. So the first thing that happens, and um, when we get into a dieting phase, like you, you mentioned, you started being strict with your, with your diet and you started adding in some cardio. I noticed there are some changes in the digestive system. The digestive system actually can hold on to a lot of food can actually hold on to a lot of weight, water weight. So when you clean up your diet and you change things out, the, the, the digestive system starts to do some things that are, that are kind of interesting. So I've seen that cause a rapid decrease in weight early on in a fat loss phase. So let's say, you know, I like to lose 1% of a person's body weight per week. Well, we might lose more than that in the first week or two because of these kind of changes that are going on in the body with digestion and the changes with hydration. Um, you might just be better at getting more sleep. You're getting better at training and recovery. All the things that kind of make up, um, you know, when you set your goal to fat loss, you just start getting better at, at executing your plan. Now, when it comes to the whoosh effect, what is that? Well, the whoosh effect is basically the fact that for a long period of time, we will stall, sometimes a week, 10 days, two weeks, three weeks, and then we'll wake up one day after not losing weight and we'll be down two, three, four pounds. And the whoosh effect, I first heard about this about 10 years ago. And when I experienced it myself, it was both very exhilarating and also very frustrating because it's unpredictable. And anyone that's gone through a fat loss phase knows every morning when you wake up and you get on the scale and it doesn't say anything different or maybe it's up a half a pound or it's the same or maybe it's down two tenths of a pound, whenever it's in that same range, you're just like, ah, oh, man, I'm doing all this work. Is, is, it, is it worth it? Am I putting in the work? Well, when you get to that day where you get on the scale and you look down and it's like down two pounds and you're like, what? That's a great feeling. You get so excited. You're like, man, okay, 
Now you start making plans for the next drop. Oh man, when's my next drop? Maybe tomorrow I'll wake up even two pounds lighter. I'm on my way. That is not muscle loss. This, this, is, this is changes in body composition. And there's a few things that precede a whoosh effect. Most notably, people will start to notice you look leaner. You'll see some new striations. You'll catch yourself in the mirror glimpsing. You'll see clothes fitting differently. Usually, in my experience as a coach, when I look at someone's pictures, I can almost predict when I'm going to see a whoosh. Visual changes precede scale drops. Why is that? Well, let's get into what the whoosh effect might be. This is all theory and conjecture. So when we're dieting and we're trying to lose body fat, right? We're trying to shrink our body fat cells. We've all heard that our fat cells are actually not changing in number. We have the same amount when we start and when we finish a diet, right? The cell is not changing. The cell number, I'm sorry, the cell size is changing. They're shrinking, right? So what's happening to that fat cell is it's losing its triglycerides. They're all gone, they leave it. So the cell should be shrinking up to nothing, right? When you got a lot of fat cells shriveling up to very, very minimal size, that's when you start to see some detail in the physique. That's when the blurring goes away. That's why people look a little bigger when they're leaner because you've no longer got that buffer between your skin and the muscle fiber. It's also probably why we get a little colder a little easier. So when that happens, you would think the triglycerides leaving the fat cell would immediately result in seeing that change. Well, the theory is, is that when we lose those triglycerides, the fat cells actually replace that with fluid. Sounds like an evil trick, okay? But why would that happen? I don't know. We're talking about physiology here on a very dynamic level. Maybe the fluids are trying to keep the fat cells in position to uptake triglycerides again, right? Maybe if you if you overeat in a, in a short frame of time, the triglycerides just go right back into the fat cells. Maybe they can possibly get reabsorbed if they're still in the area, right? Who knows? Maybe somebody out there has an answer. This is just the theories that I've heard. However, for a short period of time, those fat cells retain their size. Maybe they get a little bit smaller, but they retain their weight, okay? Because, you know, water actually carries weight to it. So now maybe the fat cell's a little bit smaller, so you look a little bit leaner, but your weight's not changing. So you can see you look leaner, you know you look leaner, you know you're kicking ass on a daily basis, but the scale is not your friend. Well, you may have heard the term, judge the mirror. Use the mirror as your judge on progress. And this is one of those times where as a coach, we need consistent pictures, because I've literally seen new striations in people and said, you know what, let's wait a couple days. I know the scale's not moving, let's wait a couple days and boom, hey coach, woke up two pounds down. That's the whoosh effect. And this is probably one of the most difficult psychological aspects of contest prep, fat loss. Anything we do is that understanding that the scale while so important, because we know we gotta get to a number, right? Like, we, we pick a number, whether it be for me, you know, I know I gotta get around 200 pounds or lower to be really good on stage. So I know the scale has to get there, but at the same time, I can't let it be the judge every single day. I get on the scale, no movement. I get on the scale, no movement. And today, really funny, oddly enough, I woke up two pounds lighter than yesterday. Two pounds, for no reason. I actually increased my sodium yesterday and didn't feel any leaner, actually ate the same exact foods as the day before. There was really nothing else. I actually just went for a walk last night, so there wasn't any added cardio. Or it just, I think the changes that I've been making over the last couple weeks, finally, finally something happened. Woke up to a, a huge, that's a huge new low for me. Losing two pounds at this stage is a, is a big drop, okay? I'm, um, so I woke up today at 213.5, which is not too far off from um, the last time I got tested at USF uh, two times ago, I was 211, and 211 for me was 8% body fat. And I feel like I've added some lean body mass since then. I've, I'm taking care of myself a little better, better sleep, better training, better recovery, better supplementation. You know, Core Nutritionals is, is really taking care of me now. So I feel like um, when I get down to that 210 mark or maybe a little bit below, I want to reach out to my friends over at USF, maybe my friend Danielle, are you watching? And we can do another body composition test. Maybe me and Lauren Conlon will go do that together because she is freaking shredded right now. Um, if you're watching Lauren Conlon's YouTube channel and she's not putting out videos, well, it's because she just bought a house and she's in prep and she's just super busy. But I can tell you the girl is shredsy. I've seen her, seen it in her face, seen her, she's got some abs. Uh, she looks great. So um, she and I are gonna try to hit the stage together sometime this year. But yeah, 
the whoosh effect. It's all about just being persistent and making progress and understanding that that damn scale, don't let it ruin your day. Yes, I know it needs to progress, but we have to take care of all the other things. And if we take care of the other things, we can understand that that itself is success. Having one, two, three consecutive successful days planning and executing, that's how you win at this game. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. It's Friday. I got to get back to the grind tomorrow. Heading down to West Palm Beach, the NPC Grand Prix. That's right. Last year, wonderful experience. This year, I've got six clients doing it. I'm driving down with a whole crew. Team Pro Physique is going to be in the house. Driving down with Lauren Dana Miller, her boyfriend Kyle, Colin DeWay, my coach Stephen Bogrand, and myself. We're going to hit the road early, get there, be there for the whole day of festivities, and um, got some amazing clients, people I'm just very excited and proud of. You guys all know who you are. If you're in the West Palm, Fort Lauderdale, Miami area, and uh, you want to come to a great show, come to the NPC Grand Prix tomorrow. Probably just going to be there all day hanging out, um, other than leaving maybe to get some lunch or something. But yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a fun day, and uh, going to document the crap out of it. I've got all these people coming with me. You bet your butt I'm going to put them to work. Be ready, Colin, Stephen. All right, guys. Talk to you tomorrow.